Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Solomon Super 8 Pro. This board features Solomon's backseat camber. So what that is, is a flat section through the nose and then camber dominance under the rear foot. Basically, it's gonna give you all the load, pop, snap, and drive right from the rear foot. But with that flat section in the front, it's gonna give you ease of entry in and out of turns, as well as more optimal powder float. This board is available in 154, 157, 160, and 163. I rode this board at Arapaho based on a day that was a mix of sunny skies, overcast skies. You had six inches of hot pow, chopped chunder, little bit of ice in spots, and lumpy groomers, and I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. This board has a middle of the road directional free ride flex. What you get is softer nose that progressively stiffens back up to the tail with a moderate amount of torsional flex that really lets you twist it. Now while this might not be the stiffest board, this board is abundantly damp. Any chatter you get in the nose completely dissipated before you feel it underfoot. When you get into rutted out terrain, any vibrations coming up underneath are gone. It plows through chop. Now the cool thing with it being that damp is that it still remains lively so it's not one of those dead lifeless turds. This is a board that just treats dampening like it's its job. The beauty of this board is how responsive it is. What you put in you get more out of. Yes it does pop predominantly off that back foot with that back seat camber so load it up, snap hard, expect to go a little bit further and a little bit higher. This is a board you can pop a side hit, hit a roller, launch a cat track gap, you're not gonna have to worry about this board at all. So with the way the camera profile is on this board, you've got that giant flat section in the nose. Pop a 180, land in it, press, and you're gonna feel it flex. And it's gonna lock into that nose butter and hold, and it's not gonna initially fight you. It will over time, because the longer you hold it, the more it wants to rebound. It's got that energy it needs to release. With the tail, you're doing high speed, just pow wheelies, that's it. This board, it's easy enough to do pow butters, play around with, even on a groomer, you can get away with it. It's not a butter stick, but it's fun to do pow butters on. So the one downside to this side cut was that it wasn't as grippy on firm or icy snow. I just encountered that mainly on the lower mountain where it was just going from slush to ice to just hard packed, hot pow. It just did not engage. Now. What you need to know with this board is that you have a slow engagement off the front foot. It's precise, I'm not gonna deny it, but it's slow. It's not the fastest engaging. When you disengage your front foot and you're driving from that rear camber into the center of the board, you get a ton of power. It comes alive, a little bit of speed. This thing is designed to steer off the back foot. It's just meant with that backseat camber. You get so much power off the tail, you can rail carves. You never have to worry about it. Now it's those little setup turns where you're doing some ankle steering and stuff. It's just not the fastest. Like I said, that front foot engagement is slow, but with a little speed, and if you know what you're doing, you can rip carves with this board and lay a trench and you get so much power, it snaps you out of that turn and puts you back into an upright position only for you to transfer that power back over onto your other edge and repeat over and over and over again. Basically, if you're going into a tight bank slalom and you're keeping your weight on the back foot so you can just apex a turn, you're gonna be fine. It's not an issue. It's when you're trying to just engage more off that front foot, really steer, that you notice it's slower and then it speeds up. Who's this board for? The snappy responsive carver that's gonna chase some resort pow. So I won't lie, really wish I'd gotten the bigger size in this, but you know, someone decided to grab that out of the demo fleet, ride over some rocks, damage it, and this is what was left, so you make do with what you have. 54 isn't gonna kill me, 57 probably would have been just a little more responsive for what I want personally. But overall, this board, it's got power out of the tail, you notice that it's responsive. The nice thing is how damp it truthfully is, like it just absorbs that chatter so you're not feeling it underfoot but it doesn't sacrifice the ride by just making it lifeless. You still get that responsiveness that you want. You've got good pop, you've got a slower edge engagement off the front, but you get more power out of that tail, which really lets you apex the carves. It's easy to pow butter on, it floats well, it's good in tight trees. Overall, it's not a bad board, 
but it's a marginal increase over the regular Super 8. Yeah, you get a little bit of a faster bass and it's maybe a hair stiffer. It's not enough that you actively notice it though. Like comparatively, when you put these back to back, you're just like, I guess there's a difference. It's not enough that most people will actually be able to tell. Comparable boards, the Nidecker Thruster, the Ride Peace Seeker, the Capita Navigator. Binding recommendations, the Solomon Hologram, the Ride A8, the Union Ultra. This has been my review of the Solomon Super 8 Pro. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, David Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.